In this lesson, we'll establish secondary foot controls. The purpose of these controls will be to drive our reverse lock helpers. To get started, we'll go over to the crate panel and create a circle. Let's draw that out on the grid. And for right now, I'll go ahead and turn off Enable and Viewport under Rendering. All right, let's go ahead and zoom into this shape. What I'd like to do is actually create a sphere from this, so we'll clone a few other shapes from this and attach them all together. So firstly, with this shape selected, we'll go ahead and clone from this. Now, if we were to go to our Rotate tool, hold down Shift, we can rotate in the Y axis about 90 degrees. Notice we can't really snap to integer numbers, integer values. If you'd like to do that, I'll go ahead and hit Cancel, we can turn on Angle Snap. The hotkey for that is A. So we'll turn that on, hold down Shift, and now as we clone this, okay, notice we're snapping in 5 degree increments. So we'll go ahead and snap until we get to 90 degrees. We'll choose OK, no need to rename it just yet. We'll go to our original shape, and now we can rotate this 90 degrees in the X. There we go. Or negative 90, it doesn't really matter. You still end up at the same spot. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to take this original shape. We'll go ahead and convert this to an editable spline. Underneath our modify panel, underneath the geometry rollout, we're going to want to attach multiple. We'll find curve 2 and 3 and choose attach. All right, great. So now we have this one shape to work with. And as you do this process, if you ever need to get to your separate shapes, you can always go to Spline, the sub-object, and then choose them that way and edit them to your liking. But I don't think it's necessary here. All right, so from here, I'd like to go ahead and turn on Rendering. So scroll all the way to the top, turn that on, maybe bring this to about 0.1 for its thickness and just snap this okay, with a quick snap to our reverse lock base. Okay, We won't scale this down just yet. Let's go ahead and clone two more for the toe and also for the ball. So we'll hold down the shift key and bring that forward. For a number of copies, we'll choose two. Okay, there they are. Now, what we basically want to do is snap their positions to basically what to what they're associated with. So the one nearest to the toe, we'll pick on that first. That selected, we'll just quick snap that to the toe helper. We'll go to the next and quick snap that to the ball helper. All right, now they're rather large. Let's say we go ahead and scale them down and then we can move their shape afterwards. All right, so selecting them all, just control clicking them. What we'll need to do is go to our Scale tool and actually set this from View to Local so we can scale all of these locally, keeping them in the same position. All right, great. So let's say from here we start to adjust their shape and only their shape. We'll go to our Move tool. We'll go to the Heel. And let's say we bring this out and up so it's easier to select, which we want to do for all of our controls. All right, so we go to our hierarchy panel, choose Effect Object Only. Again, with our Move tool, we'll go ahead and bring this out, and we'll bring that up. Go into the next object for the ball, selecting that. Again, we'll just want to bring that shape up. Okay, where it's easy to select. Might bring it forward just a little bit more, too. And then go into the toe. We'll want to do the same. Bring that out. And we can bring that up just a little bit more. All right, there we have it. So we have their positions in place. Of course, we want to recolor them. Let's say we go ahead and choose that light blue we've been using. Okay, we could always go with a slightly different shade if we need to. It won't make a big uh, difference in this case, but a different shape or a different shade and color does help to uh, you know easily discern between controls. 
All right, so that looks good. From here, let's say we go ahead and link these together and mirror them over to the right side and then we can rename them and attach them so that they will actually control what they need to. So we'll go to our link tool and we'll link from our ball to the toe so that the ball is now parented underneath the toe and the toe will be parented underneath the heel. Now that that's done with the mouse selected, we'll select, or excuse me, with our heel control selected, we'll go ahead and press control page down and clone these. We could actually just use the mirror tool. So we'll go ahead and find that. Mirror these for their offset. Again, we could use about 4.8. Choose OK. And now it's just a matter of making sure that they are in their right position. So starting with the heel, press Shift A and choose the heel helper. Go into the ball, Shift A, align that back to the ball helper and do the same for the toe. Now going back to the heel, let's hold down Control, press Page Down and recolor these. Again, we can use a different shade of green. All right, great. So they're all linked properly and they're all in the right position. Okay, next step is to rename these. So starting with the left side, this is going to be CC underscore L underscore heel zero one. The ball, that's going to be CC underscore L underscore Ball01, could always copy the name here, go to the toe, paste, and rename this. Now we can move over to the right side, take care of that. We're just about finished here. This is actually the heel. Okay, there we go. I'll just copy that name. Go to the ball, rename it, and rename the toe. All right, great. So we have them in place, we have them renamed, we have them all linked the way they need to be. Let's say we actually have them control something now. So what we can do from here is go ahead and now link these helpers to these controls instead of to themselves, as we've done before. So we'll go ahead and find our link tool. When we link them to the helpers, that gave us an idea of the functionality we're going to be able to get. But now it's time to link them to the controls so that, of course, they will be in a finalized, uh, finalized state. So starting with this right side, we want to take that helper and link that to the ball control that we've made. We'll do the same thing for the toe and for the heel. And watch this. If we go ahead and go to our rotate tool, start to rotate this control around, it's working exactly the way we need it to. And again, notice how much faster it is to just go in and select these controls and rotate rather than going to a parameter and controlling it that way. Great. Let's say we go ahead and do the same for the left side. All right, so again, it's just a matter of linking from our helpers to their controls. And then we'll want to test this out. Start to rotate these around. They're working great. Working great. And let's test the toe. Working just fine. Okay, now that finishes up our secondary controls. We do want to freeze transformations on them, but we're going to set up our, our bank first, and then we'll link everything so that this main foot control will drive the entire leg 
And then from there, we can freeze transformations. We'll also make sure we lock any parameters that we don't want the animator to animate on so that as they animate, they have a clean keying process. So that finishes this lesson. In the next lesson, we can start to set up our bank controls.